गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंग्लिश क्लास मे योर डे बी हेल्दी एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग चिल्ड्रेन टूडे इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज रीडर चैप्टर वन एंड इवेंटफुल समर चिल्ड्रेन एंड इवेंटफुल समर इज एन एक्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम द फेमस बुक टू किल अ मॉकिंग बर्ड written by the american author harper lee the story is narrated by 6 year old jean louise finch nicknamed scout who lives with her brother jem father atticus and the cook calponi in the quiet town of micco alabama in the deep south of the united states It is a sleepy summer in Mexico. Children, people in Mexico take a lot of time to do nothing because there is no way to go and nothing much to do anyway. Scout is a bit of a wild child and gets disciplined by Calpony. Often in her introduction to their parents She says their father met their mother when he was elected to state legislature. He was older by 15 years. Jem was born first and then 4 years later Scott. She died when Scott was 2 and Jem 6. Scott does not miss her mother so much as Jem does. Calponia keeps a strict eye on the brother sister duo scolding them if they venture out of the safe territory which is between two doors to the north and three doors to the south in this boring summer dill appears he is from meridian mississippi and 7 years old but looks younger he meets scott and jem and all three become great friends the summer takes a turn for the better as the trio now enact out plays and have lots of fun so this was the summary of the chapter children now let us take the reading of the chapter an eventful summer an extract from to kill a mocking bird by harper lee I remember Miko from that summer as a tired old town. In rainy weather, the streets would be covered in red slop and grass. The summers were terribly hot. Black dogs suffered in the heat, while the mules took shelter in the shade of giant oak trees. The people moved slowly. I took their time about everything. There was no way to go, nothing to buy, and no money to buy it with. But it was a time of hope too. For some people, we lived on the main residential street in town. Atticus, Jem, and I, plus Calpurnia, are cook. Jem and I found our father satisfactory. He played with us, read to us, and treated us with courteous detachment. Calpurnia was something else again. She was all angles and bones. She was near-sighted. Her hand was wide as a bed slat and twice as hard. She was always ordering me out of the kitchen and calling me home when I wasn't ready to come she had been with us ever since Jem was born and I had felt her tyrannical presence as long as I could remember our mother died when I was 2 so I never felt her absence but I think Jem did He remembered her clearly and sometimes in the middle of a game he would sigh at length 
then go off and play by himself behind the car house when he was like that i knew better than to bother him when i was almost 6 and jem was nearly 10 Our boundaries were Mrs. Henry Lafayette Dubois' house, two doors to the north of us, and the Redley Place, three doors to the south. We were never tempted to break them. The Redley Place was inhabited by an unknown entity, and Mrs. Dubois was plain health. That summer. Dill came to us early one morning as we were beginning our day's play in the backyard Jem and I heard something next door we went to the wire fence to see if there was a puppy instead we found someone sitting looking at us we stared at him until he spoke hey hey yourself I am Charles Baker Harris I can read So what I just thought you would like to know I can read You got anything needs reading I can do it How old are you 4 and a half going on 7 Shoot no wonder then said Jem Scott yonder's been reading ever since she was born and she ain't even started to school yet you look right puny for going on 7 i'm little but i'm old why don't you come over charles baker harris lord what a name yes not any funnier than yours aunt rachel says your name's jeremy atticus finch i am big enough to fit mine Your name's longer than you are, but it's a foot longer. Folks call me Dill. Do better if you go over it instead of under it. Where did you come from? Dill was from Meridian, Mississippi. Was spending the summer with his aunt, Miss Rachel, and would be spending every summer in Mico from now on. His mother worked for a photographer in Meridian had entered his picture in a beautiful child contest and won $5 she gave the money to Dill who went to the picture show 20 times on it don't have any picture shows here except Jesus once in the courthouse sometimes ever see anything good Dill had seen Dracula a revelation that moved Jem to I him with the beginning of respect tell it to us Dill was a curiosity he wore blue linen shorts that buttoned to his shirt his hair was snow white and stuck to his head like duck fluff He was a year my senior but I towered over him. When Dill completed narrating Dracula to us, Jem said the show sounded better than the book. Thereafter the summer passed in routine contentment, improving our tree house that rested between giant twin china berry trees in the backyard. and running through our list of dramas based on the works of Oliver Optic, Victor Appleton and Edgar Rice Burroughs in this matter we were lucky to have Dill he played the character parts formerly trust upon me the ape in Tarzan Mr Crabtree in the Rover Boys Mr Demon in Tom Swift thus we came to know Dill as a pocket merlin whose head teemed with eccentric plans strange longings and quaint fancies